Good afternoon, YouTube. It's your boy Humble Warrior coming back at you with another video. Um, nice. I knew that they was gonna come, so get out the way real quick. Um, Buffalo Bills manhandled the Miami Dolphins today, 48-20. Um, plenty of thing, plenty of um, finger point that can go around, but we'll just say that the defense of the Dolphins really didn't even bother to show up today. Which is fine, but credit to the Bills for being so physical and aggressive with the Miami Dolphins offense, locking them up in terms of the passing attack and limiting them to, to the big splash plays that everybody was accustomed to um, from Tua and Hill and Waddle. Actually, from Tua and, and Tyreek Hill. Um, today, Tua was 25 of, of 35. Um, 282, a touchdown and a pick. He got sacked four times. Um, Pretty uncharacteristic day for him, but the defense actually gave him a lot of different looks. Um, they confused him at times. Um, they mixed up the coverages, playing really well to shielding things off to where he couldn't get to his second and third read at times because they took away a lot of what they like to do. So it seems like the Dolphins came to that game with the same offensive game plan that they had from the Broncos game thing it was going to work out, and it didn't. So... With that being said, Mike McDaniel has to become much more creative. It's funny how people give us so much credit when they trout the, the Broncos for 70 points. Now, if you watch that game, clearly the Broncos are not the same caliber of a team as um, the Dolphins were. But everybody and their they mama want to talk about how great the Dolphins were and how explosive they look and stuff like that. Even I was, you know kind of impressed by it. I mean, you see my last video I did to talk about the stats and stuff like that. But I also understood Kaisen, no, you can't, I can't do that right now, Kaisen. I was playing the mug. Well, then get it back. Here. Okay. Yeah, you the one took it off of there. But, um, yeah, I, I knew that was coming. Because, I mean, the, the league itself had overly hyped the Dolphins offense, which it's still an explosive offense. Don't get me wrong; they still can score. But if you if you're giving if you're constantly giving the same highlight clips over and over and over and over again out in every social media outlet, True. then what you expect to happen? I mean, the Bills are going to take that personal, as if they're not the top dog in the AFC East, which right now it is a it is a top first place. Although the Bills own it now because they beat us, so we're technically in second. So it's Bills and us. But we still have a chance to bounce back, beat them at home, end of the year. And we can, you know, still have a, a decent playoff or well, a home playoff game. However, it's going to take a lot more of a total team effort for that to happen. I don't understand how we go from giving up basically 13 points in one game, giving up 40 the next defensively. The Bills did whatever and however they wanted to do to us, they did it. Now, Tua has some fault in that too because you gotta take you gotta take advantage of some of what they're giving you. The three and out plays, we should have cast them in for touchdowns. They're going for two. I did understand that we should just kick the field goal, went down by went up by went down by fourteen and called it a day. But didn't do it. It is what it is. Um, I feel like the offense played flat. They were not they were not aggressive. They literally was folding like tents out there. Now, the good thing out of that is Tua took a lot of hits, but you saw him kept getting back up. He took a lot of punishment today, and they were trying their best to tee off on him every chance they got. So, then the second half, you saw that he was able to step up in the pocket more because the first half, they took it away from him. They brought blisses from different angles. One of the angles, he didn't catch it in time, and, you know, Jadavis White got to him. A couple other guys got to him that were unblocked. Um, most of that is on him for making the correct checks and reads. However, if he does that, the line has to hold their blocks. You can't just let a guy come off free. So if it's five of y'all and five of us, somebody, that means somebody got to put a hat on the hat to give him the time he needs to look down the field. But it didn't happen. Credit to the Bills defense today. They looked good. Now, it's only week four. So people calm down with this, oh, the sky is falling and we're the worst team and blah, blah, blah. You're damn three and one. Let it go. Move on to I think we got the Giants next or the Panthers next or whoever it is. 
move on to that squad. You win these next two games, you go you go move to five and one, and then you prepare for a game against um I, I think it's either Philly or Kansas. I think it's Philly, who is a much more dominant defense than what the what the Bills are. The Bills just wanted the Bills just had our number today. They wanted to embarrass us. That's why we're gonna be by twenty eight. There's no way around that. Which now social media here it is. Bills and Josh trying to make a statement. They can make all the statements they want, but come playoff time, the Bills fold like circuit tests too. Every single year the Bills fold. So I, I don't even get hyped up over this regular season stuff. Because they can go 15-1 the rest of the year and still get the playoffs and play like grandma must put. So it don't matter. Now kudos to them. They did beat us. Kudos. They sent a message. But that don't mean we can't send one back to them later on in the year. Now we don't know what the Bills record will be moving forward because Josh Allen's not going to play like this the entire season. With that being said, people calm down. Like, don't make this about, you know, Tua playing like trash and da 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 da. The reality was our defense did not show up today. If our defense played an inkling of what they did against the Denver Broncos or against uh, the Patriots, we don't give up 48 points. We don't. So, kill the noise, man, with this, you know, old. You know, basically the sky's falling in and people feel like it's over because we got beat by 28. No, it's a message. And I hope now that Mike McDaniel and Vic Banjo got that message. I'm pretty sure Tua got the message loud and clear. Because you see, you seen Tyreek Hill and Waddle pissed off on the sideline, taking the knee with five minutes left. They had checked out that game. There was nothing to fight for. But credit to, you know, Tua for staying out there as long as he could to basically, you know, Galvanize the troops. If you see the clear talent drop off from Waddle and Hill to the rest of those guys. I mean, Braxton Berrios, I mean, yeah, he's a speedster, but what else is he besides a gadget guy and a punt returner? Nothing. So the drop off is tremendous with those two receivers we have versus everybody else that's on our roster. Which is why I don't know why I chose to even get back on the team. He didn't do nothing. Now, the interception was not his fault because two or two are too damn high. I'm not going to put that on him. But at the same time, let's pump the brakes. It's one game. Yeah, you can be upset because we lost. We got beat by 28. Of course, have your pity party, but damn it, get off the damn horse or get back up on the damn horse and ride this mug out. You still have 13 more games. You still have a chance. It's not 13. You got 12 more games. You still, yeah, it's 12 because it's 17 games. So you still got a chance to have a, a really good record. Don't be out here crying because you lost <clears throat> to the Bills. So you still got to handle a little business with the Jets. And you still got a chance to even things with the Bills when they come down to Miami in December. So it's far from over. They just got us today. <clears throat> I'm not going to harp on it. I mean, yeah, like I said, they had a great game plan for us. And we couldn't stop them defensively. And they ran our offense off the field. However, they did lose to Darius White. Like, he won't be back at all this season. If he ruptures Achilles, so that's that's a done deal. But I want to see what we're made of. I mean, this game did not define us. If anything, it humbled us. It brought us back down to reality, which is what we needed, a reality check. Because I could tell that people people was on the emotional high from the from the Broncos game, and I knew I was like, this is a setup because the Dolphins, yeah, they look good against the the Broncos, but I mean, hell, the Bears look good against them. So what does it say about Denver? What does it say about Denver? And they're in the shootout right now with the Broncos. I, I think they actually won again. I think the Broncos won. But just because we put up 70 against them, they were in they were inferior to us. We supposed to put up those kind of numbers. Now it gets better competition. Look at what we look like. But it also is a team concept, a team game. So you can't sit there and definitively say, I'm going the wrong way, I think I am. You can't definitively say that, hey, you know, well. They were a much better team. They were well coached. Yeah, they were, but hell, that don't mean we that don't mean we can't make adjustments and fight back in the game to get back in it. No, that's that's an excuse. We had just been opportunities in the second half to get back in that game. We just did not execute. So now that the the taste of being undefeated is no longer there, now you have a new focus to win the game you're supposed to win and beat the teams that you're supposed to beat, get into the playoffs, make some noise. <clears throat> Hopefully make this play, deep playoff run. But it's got to start with every player on that team. It cannot all be, be on Tua. 
he, like I said, he he didn't have a shitty game. I honestly, I give him a, a C plus today because he made some throws that were good and he made some character uncharacteristic throws. Then I saw that he was rushed out the pocket. He wasn't setting his feet on certain throws. He looked timid at times. They, like I said, they confused him, which is all happens in, in being a quarterback. All of it happens. But that does not mean that the sky is falling in. So let's not go there. Um, I will say that with Devon A-Chain, a we found our number one running back. He's legit. Just He should be starting from now on, and, and most Moster can back him up because he become a fumbling machine. Back to back fumbles he gave up, which led to, <coughs> to getting 17 points. And then of course, it helped two to a pick, and they cashed in with that one too. Yes, it is, sir. But that's my time, guys. I got to get out of here. Like I said, I'm about to take my son to the hospital. But um, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think, and don't and don't be biased. Don't get on don't get on my thing talking about you know two is sucks and this and third. Give an honest evaluation because it was more than just two out there, which kills me with people. They're like two played on offense, even special team. He only plays on offense. He only control what the offense can do. They didn't put him enough points today, that is on him. The defense gave him 48 points, that is on them. And it is a team combined effort because both sides, all three facets of the game got to play together to get a better outcome. They didn't do that today. So it's enough blame to go around. Mike McDaniels is just, just as responsible. But don't sit here and place all that to his feet like he's the alpha and omega of the team because he's not. He's under the, the, tutelage, the tutelage of the head coach and the OC and that's the way it is. But with that being said, guys, I got to get out of here, like I said, because I got to take my son to the hospital. But let me know what you guys think. Peace.